Okay, here's our second run at Intro to Drones for Panos. I'm uh, in the lecture theater slash media school at Michael's Camera. Of course, it's John Warkington from Pano Boot Camp, but as you all know, I wear two hats. So, I'm at work, and uh, as I've been doing a lot of work with live broadcasting, and uh, trying to get all the black magic tools together along with broadcasting to Facebook from desktop, I am doing another run at Intro to Drones. Now, last week when we did this, and let's just get uh, our um, full screen here, get you excited about panos and drones here. Um, keep in mind I'm running a multiple camera system here today and I've got my computer tied into it as well. I've got all sorts of crazy things happening here. I'm just going to get a drone pano up and running so that you can get a little excited about what I'm excited about. So let's go over to camera three and put that here. There we go. Intro to drones for panos. So I have got uh, artwork uh, streaming live on Facebook. I've got my Michael's watermark, I've got my title here, so I can even uh, bring these things in and out all through the hardware controls on the Blackmagic uh, ATEM, which uh, I don't even know what that stands for, but it's basically an eight input switcher for video signals, and it's a pretty impressive piece of kit. I'll put the links in the comments if anybody's interested in it. So our plan here is to fly the drone, and the drone is sitting over here, uh, I'm going to just turn off our watermark now. And um, so the drone is sitting in its uh, box over here on the floor. And uh, let me just quickly uh, change one more part of my broadcast here. I want to get my ATEM control up. And here we go here. I just want to put my little Michael's watermark at the bottom here. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to go over to the box, I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to go walk you through the whole procedures that I use to get a drone in the air. I kind of skirted over some of these things last time. Uh, so, drone is basically in the foam box, which is part of the shipping that comes with these um, uh, DJI Phantom 4s. And, uh, and uh, so I guess 4, 4 Plus, and 4 Advanced. So you don't really need to buy yourself um, a bag for the thing because the foam case inside its cardboard box when you buy the drone is quite useful. And uh, they make little backpacks that these little foam inserts uh, slide into. And I've got to get one. And we don't sell them at the store here. I want to find a supplier that has them. I've seen them online. So that's uh, something that uh, I want to uh, bring into the mix at some point in the near future. Now let's just get back to Facebook here. I want to make sure that everybody is aware that they can talk to me on Facebook, even though I'm doing a one-man broadcast right now. Uh, I'm just going to type this thing here. Get your questions ready and type them in the comments. Okay, so in case anybody wants to ask me any questions, I'm here to help. Uh, I'll be back in front of the uh, computer screen a little bit later on after we get this thing running. So let me get over to the box. Oh, here, I've got uh, two cameras as well in the room here. Let me just show you the other feed. So I've got a 5D Mark IV uh, showing a wider room view, and I'll probably run that when I'm in the air. And then I've got a little Panasonic Lumix G7, which is just sort of zoomed in on the box. So I'm going to walk over to the box right now and um, I'm going to open up the drone and give you the rundown on what it takes to get this thing going. I think I'm going to drop my, re my um, uh, recording levels down just a little bit here while I'm at it. I think I'm just a little bit hot on the mic. So let me just bring that down just a bit, and that should do it. Okay, so here I am in front of the camera. I am going to open up the box. So there's a little latch on the top of it here, which is kind of like it's not a lock or anything, but it seems to work reliably. And um, so that is basically, as you can see, there's a little, uh, little metal key thing that comes down there. So that keeps it closed. And in the box, all the parts when you buy the drone are inside here. Um, they give you a, uh, two sets of propellers. Uh, there's a charger and um, all the manuals and whatever. 
But once you have taken the charger out, there's more room inside the box for you to put your batteries and then put all your little parts over here. So basically you've got room for your transmitter. You can shove your cell phone in over here, a couple cables and what have you. Uh, you've got two spare battery spots that are perfectly located right here and uh, they don't wobble around or anything. And then of course you have a third battery uh, already in the drone. So I'm gonna pop the drone out here and I'll just give you a little rundown what we've got. So obviously there's a like, uh, it's, it's a plastic drone. It looks a bit like a toy, which is kind of convenient. So nobody thinks you're up to anything crazy with some big professional chainsaw of a drone. Uh, the gimbal is on the bottom here and it's all integrated. So you don't have to build any of this stuff. There's a little plastic holder to make sure the gimbal doesn't get damaged when you're in storage. So that just snaps on the feet here and it's got a little bit of a plastic thing which kind of protects the lens on the front. So now as you can see, once I've removed this little holder, just shove that back in here, the gimbal's kind of floppy. So the gimbal is electrically powered. There's these little motors in here. So once it, the drone is powered up, you'll see that the gimbal starts to do things. But otherwise, it's just uh, kind of floppy and it's fragile. You don't want to hit this thing. And of course, if you crash your drone and the camera takes a hit and the gimbal takes a hit, you could bend these little arms. And I've seen some damaged ones come into the store. Um, so that's what you got to take care of. Now, luckily, the feet or the legs of the drone here sort of take care of most of the impact if you have a little bit of a tip on land or whatever, but full on crash, you'll probably destroy the camera and that's going to cost you money to get it fixed. Uh, I bought um, what's called DJI Care Refresh, which will cover you in one year of ownership of the drone for two full, what they call hull replacements, albeit you have to pay $309 Australian for the hull replacements and the warranty costs $100 or $260. But it's a lot cheaper than spend another 2,500 bucks for a new drone. So I think it was a good, a good purchase. Anyway, so there's the drone out of the box. Now I'm just going to, there's a switch on the back of uh, all the batteries and whether it's in the drone or out of the drone, the battery will tell you its charge status. So just one little press here and the bar graph comes up and it tells me that this battery, I don't know if you can see all the batteries see. There you go. You can see that it's fully charged. So I'm ready to roll. That gives you, you know, 25, 50, 75, 100% sort of thing. Uh, obviously, once you get the battery all connected up to the drone in the software, you'll see the exact charge. These batteries are pretty smart. The whole system on charging and battery management is beautifully engineered. So as long as you, you know, obey the general purpose rules of how to use this stuff, which is clearly, you know, stated in the manual, and I can go over some of these things later. Um, your batteries are going to just work fine. Uh, they're very high density uh, batteries and they take oh, maybe an hour and a half to charge or so. Uh, I have a, a, a charging plate. I don't, know what, I don't know what they call it, the rapid, no, it's not rapid charger. Just, I don't know what it's called. But anyway, it enables you to charge three batteries in series. So not in parallel, but in series. And um, it starts with charging the the battery that needs the least amount of top up first. So uh, anyway, it's pretty smart. And of course, while you're charging the batteries, you can also charge the remote controller. So let me just put this over to the side here and I'll bring out the remote controller. So that's the remote. And of course, you've got your joysticks here. And then this little part on the front is what the phone mounts to. So I've already got a couple of little things. You can put iPads or iPhones and small tablets, whatever in this thing. When I mount my phone, I have to have these little, uh, little, uh, I don't know what you call them, grips down, and then you press that button and the thing springs open. So I get my phone here and I've got a large format iPhone. So it's the 6 Plus. It's not the most current, so that's two generations old, but it seems to work fine. And you pop it in here. It's in a case, but that's fine. The trick when you're popping it in is to make sure that you don't, I don't know if you can see this, but anyway, the volume buttons are there. So I've got to make sure that you're not pressing on the volume button. Uh, I tend to run it on this side with the power input over here, which is the Apple lightning jack, because that has to, with a short cable, connect to the remote. So let me get that cable out here. Because your iPhone is your real-time video feed from the drone or your tablet or whatever. Uh, so there's a USB jack on the back of the remote here. And then of course, this is the lightning cable. It does not come with a lightning cable. It comes with an Android format cable when you buy this. So you need to buy your own lightning cable if you're an Apple user. Uh, I just, you get the short ones. They're, they're the best for this job. So you plug that in. Okay, so that's what we need to worry about for that for the time being. So let's put this down and let's get our propellers mounted. So I've got the four propellers just sitting here. 
and I've got four spares there. Now, I've had a couple of run-ins with shrubs and things, so my propellers are getting a little bit nicked up, but they're all good. Uh, if they get really damaged, you might have a bit of vibration into the drone, which could affect your um, video and your still quality. Uh, I'm not sensing any problems with mine yet. They're, they're still pretty good. Uh, very tough propellers, I might add, and they're not expensive. I think a new set's $20 US or $30 Australian. So, and it's nice that they come with two sets. So let me just put this over to the side for a little bit here. Now, the propellers on drones, because there's four of them, uh, they counter-rotate so that the drone is inherently stable in the air. And if you can sort of see here, the motors are pitched in a little wee bit. So the whole thing, all the propellers kind of come in like that. So it sort of, you know, naturally sort of hangs in the air quite well. So there are counterclockwise and clockwise propellers. And there are, if I bring in my thing a little bit closer here, you see that's a black propeller and this one is a silver propeller here. So you're black and you're silver, you have to know that. And there are little black dots on the mount. I don't know if you can see them here, little black dots right there and no black dots on the silver one. So you just put black with black and you're ready to roll. So you just sort of rotate the bottom of the silver part here and you press down it's spring loaded and then you just rotate it until it clips and then you just make sure you have visual or sort of physical confirmation that it's uh it's locked in so you do the first black one and then you go across and you'll do the other black one press down and you got to rotate the correct direction and you're locked and then when you do the next ones they'll be rotating the other way so press down you sort of make sure you don't want to force these things but you do want to make sure that they're locked in. Because obviously if you take off and a propeller goes flying off, well then you're probably going to crash the drone. So we got our propellers mounted. Again, just another little physical check of everything that's all good. Give the, give the, um, the quadcopter a good once over, make sure there's been no hits or impacts or anything. Just, you know, always good to do a visual inspection. Uh, no cracks or anything. And mine's in pretty good nick because I've been really taking care of it. So I'm all good there. So now, uh, next order of business is your remote. So you give a single press to the power button and that tells you your battery level of your remote. And then, so single press again and then press and hold and that'll turn it on. Now the red light's on, that's good. Now the remote has also got a big battery in here about the same size as the one in the drone and that is going to power your phone a little bit. So your phone's probably not gonna run out of charge while you're flying. It'll actually charge a little wee bit, which is quite handy. So, uh, remote's powered up. Let's get the phone powered up here and into the drone. And let's turn on the drone. And you do the same trick with the drone. You do a single press and then you do a long press. Now, if I turn this around here, you can hear it making some noise. You can see that the gimbal's doing some stuff. It's calibrating itself. You do have to be careful when you're taking off drones in a wet or grassy environment. There's not a lot of room between the legs and thus the ground and the lens of the camera when it's at the bottom. So uh, if you don't want to get your camera lens all dirty with stuff, I tend to try to uh, power it up, you know, on a chair or on the case or something. And then I like to use the gimbal control, which is this wheel on the far left side in the top corner of the uh, remote and I ang angle my camera up before I go flying just so that it, you know, I don't want to get any, you know, dew or dirt on the lens. Anyway, so that's how that goes. Now, I'm going to just quickly step back in front of the um, um, computer here so I can just move over. I'm going to put the drone here and I'm going to angle the camera away from us. So, let me get over here and I now have got the, pro the issue fixed where I can send you guys the signal from the drone. So, first order of business is getting the Apple telephone over to what, how I'm doing it is with an Apple TV. So let's go over to channel four here and bring over. And there we go. We now have the iPhone interface sent over to the stream. And I'll just bring that down. And there you go. So now we can see my iPhone interface. So what I need to do now is run the drone app, which I have in a folder over here labeled drone. And there it is. And it's the DJI Go app. So give it a sec here and it's going to connect. And you should see everything. I'm going to take the watermark off for the time being here. So we don't need that. Oh, actually, I'll just got to do this in another software. 
Let's go turn that off. There we go. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about now. Obviously, I can't use any hand gestures while I'm showing you this, but I, uh, you, as you can see, I'm moving the camera live. So we have a live feed from the drone being broadcast out to Facebook. So over on the right hand side, we have our camera settings areas. So the big white button is to take a picture. So if I press that button right now, it will take a shot. And uh, we should have heard it do that. And if I press the uh, little three dots below that big button here, that brings the camera settings fly out. So what I want to do is just make sure that our camera settings are pretty good for the room. Now keep in mind, we're indoors, it's not that bright and uh, I've got the ISO set to 400. If I bring the ISO down to say 200, you should see the image get darker and the histogram gets a bit darker. So that's all right, you know that. So I'll take it back to 400. Uh, if I change the aperture from 2.8 F4, you should see it also gets darker by a stop. So we need as much light as we can indoors here for this little test, keeping in mind that these pictures we're going to generate probably won't be very good, but it's just a test. I wanna show you guys how you shoot a panda with this thing. And unfortunately, when I did the broadcast last week, none of it really worked well because I couldn't get you the signal out of the phone into the broadcast. And of course, we have shutter speed on the bottom here, and I'm just sliding back and forth. So there, I'm going to a little longer shutter speed, obviously overexposed, get it back to about an eighth of a second. Well, that's a tenth. Probably an eighth of a second is what we need to do. Um, and of course, because we're in manual mode, it's giving me uh, a light meter reading saying we're 0.7 stops. Um, over what it feels is the right exposure, but hey, we should be good to go. If I uh, move up a little bit, you might see it gets a bit brighter because there's white on the roof. If I move down a little bit, it might get a little bit darker because of course it's on a black floor over there. So that's all very interesting. Now for what it's worth, I've got a little hotkey set up on the remote. You can't see me running it here because of course we're taking the live feed from the drone, but I can instantly put the camera angled all the way down or level. And I find that's very, very handy when flying so that you can get yourself oriented. And I also like to take pictures shooting straight down. Obviously, that's one of the final stages in doing a panorama. Okay, let's give a little bit more about the app here. Uh, so those were camera settings, basically, you know, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. Let's get into camera settings, which is over here. So uh, we're in the photo mode. We've got different modes, of course. So, you know, you can do bursts and time or whatever. I'm just going to do single shot here. Image size, um, there's different aspect ratios you can use, but in the case of the Phantom 4 Professional, you want to run 3-2 because then you're using the full sensor of the camera. So that is standard 35 millimeter digital SLR aspect ratio, which is nice. Some of the other Phantoms are 4-3 aspect ratio, which is more like a consumer camera. Um, image format, I tend to use RAW. There is one disadvantage in using RAW you cannot get the photo out of the camera while you're flying and do anything with it. You, there's really nothing you can do with it in the DJI apps. You've got to do your post-production later. However, you can do JPEG and RAW or JPEG alone. Um, I might just put it to JPEG and RAW for the heck of it for this uh, little test. Uh, last, you've got your white balance controls here. Uh, if we go to auto, it'll probably change. Oh, it's a bit cooler there. Uh, we've got LED lights in here and uh, believe it or not, the incandescent setting seems to work quite well with them. So I'm going to stick with incandescent for my white balance. Obviously, because you're shooting raw files, you can change it later, but I, I tend to just leave it locked uh, when I'm using the drone, even though I, I'm an auto white balance fan when I'm using my digital SLRs. So that's how I run it. Uh, let me just sort of see if anybody's uh, watching us here. We've got a comment. Uh, geez, we're already eight minutes into, 18 minutes into this thing. Anywho. Um, Oh, there's no comment. That's my comment. <laughs> so uh, that's our white balance uh, settings. We get back out of that. Uh, there is some styles in color. Um, these are more s about, you know, what you're doing when video with this thing, but uh, there's some sharpness and whatever. None of this matters with a RAW file. It matters a little bit more for your JPEGs, but I'm always going to work on the RAWs. Anyway, um, the landscape setting, I don't know. Sounds like a good name. <laughs> I've been using it. Uh, and then this is your color profiles. Again, this is more for the video guys who want to use this D-Log and Sin-like so they can you know, get a little bit more uh, out of their pictures when they're doing their post-production out of their video. I've been predominantly shooting stills with the drone. Lastly, you've got your settings here. 
Uh, I like the histogram on. I don't want my LEDs on on the front of the drone when I'm taking a picture. I don't use their overexposure warning because I'm using um, manual exposure. The mechanical shutter, I'm still not too sure about this whole thing about mechanical versus electronic on this drone, but anyway, I've got it set on. I don't use the autofocus assistant or the manual focus assistant. I do have the grid set on and I have the center point set on with that little X thing. Um, I don't know about this anti-flicker. I guess I got it turned on. Didn't even know, I hadn't even thought about that. Um, lastly, I'm going to format my SD card right now because I've got some leftover pictures from the previous flights which aren't important. So let's give the SD card a format. Keep in mind, it's not really an SD card. It's a micro SD card. Uh, the drone actually comes with one too. Uh, so um, it's a little 16 gig Sony card that they give you. So that's basically camera settings. So we're all good to go with that. Now we also see that we're on the 2.4 gigahertz up in the top here in the middle. It says HD, a little bar graph there. So we're on the 2.4 gigahertz control channel. That's good. Our battery is at 95%, so that's all good. Uh, obviously we're not getting any GPS signals because we're indoors, so that's all fine. Uh, the map does seem to kind of locate where we actually are here. I can hit on the map and bring it up full screen. No, it's completely wrong. That's got nothing to do with where we are. It thinks I'm at home. So yeah, because there's no GPS. So let's get out of that. Got to go, I guess, to bring that back. We hit the camera. There we go. Um, unfortunately, you can't really move the map view around on the screen. You just sort of, it's stuck in the corner there. Um, okay. So we've got the camera set up, it's pretty good. What we wanna do is get this drone in the air. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna flip back over to one of my other cameras here. I'm gonna walk over to the drone and I'm going to put it on the ground in a different spot versus on the stage here. And what I wanna do is do a compass calibration. So let me go back here and I wanna show you the panel. This is where I made a mistake last week when I did the broadcast. So let's flip over to the drone here again. So there is, oh, there are a whole slew of sub panels all over this thing. Uh, these are all the main drone settings all over here. I'm not gonna dive into any of that. I've got them all set the way I like them. It keeps giving me this error saying ambient light too weak. But anyway, if you press at the top left here in this yellow area where it says ready to go, you can bring up some aircraft, aircraft status panels and I want to calibrate the compass. So I'm going to go here, calibrate, and this is what I forgot to do the other day. So let's go calibrate that. It says OK and a little panel is going to come up and it's going to tell me to rotate the aircraft horizontally and uh, maintain a distance um, from sources of interference. And sources of interference tend to be things like metal. And uh, I've calibrated earlier in the room here, but I want to go and show you the whole process. But I'm just going to flip back to the other camera so you can see uh, what I'm going to do here. So we need camera. Uh, no, let's go over to camera. We need that one there. Camera one, sorry. There we go. Camera one. Obviously, it's a little bit difficult to do this stuff with just one person. So here I am back out in the room. So what it wants me to do is pick the drone up and rotate it counterclockwise. So, and you got to be over one spot. So you kind of just walk like this. They call this the drone dance or something. Anyway, now I've done one whole rotation. Now it has asked me to put the drone sideways. So I'm going to go like this and then I continue to rotate myself counterclockwise and then it's finished. So I get a half decent uh, status that says everything is happy. So let's go back here and I'll put the that signal on. So we're back to the drone now. We're still live. It's still telling us ambient light is too weak. We're not going to worry too much about that, but these errors are very annoying. You always have to hit close to get rid of them. And the drone is happy. So we have calibrated a compass and we're ready to go. So let's get it in the air. So I'm going to just put myself over here. And I'm going to use the software control to launch the drone. So as you can see on the far left of the screen, there are some icons below in that column below where it says DJI in the total upper left. 
So the one here that says, uh, it's got a little circle, like an oval with an arrow up. That's the one that's going to help me take off the drone. So it says take off. Ensure the conditions are safe for takeoff. Aircraft will go to an altitude of 1.2 meter and hover in place. So you just slide this little slider over here on the phone and it's gonna take off. There we go. So now you can see it has taken off and it's a little bit loud in here because of the noise of the drone. But it's much more stable than it was last time. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate the drone over so that you can see where I am. Okay, well, that's good. Let's just go back to our live drone feed. And there's the drone. So I'm standing over here. You can see the uh, 5D Mark IV is there. If I come forward a little bit and angle down, there's the little Panasonic camera that we were using when we were opening up the case. And that's how it all goes. So we're pretty stable now. So let's just flip back to the other camera here. So you can see it's hovering not too bad. So now let's go through the process of shooting a panorama. So I'm gonna get the drone a little bit more centered in the room here. So I'm just gonna back, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Sorry, I gotta back up. And I'm going to go a little higher. And I'm gonna go a little bit out. Okay, so that's all good. Let's go back to the uh, drone eye view. So that's what the drone is seeing. Okay, relatively stable. So now what we need to do is we're going to kick out of the DJI control app and we're gonna to go to a little free program which is called Drone Pano. And that is going to enable us to do some automatic shooting to make the frames to create a panorama. So. Let's get back to the drone eye view here. And, oh sorry, <laughs> I'm already there. I'm looking at so many cameras. So, on the iPhone, I'm just gonna quickly press the home button to get back to the uh, main page here. And there you can see I've got the DJI app, and I've got a drone pan app, and I've got the one called Lychee. I'm gonna use drone pan. So we'll launch that. You see that drone pan is connected to the drone now, so we're seeing a live, a live view. So I'll move the camera, drone pan is seeing that. Now, drone pan has a little bug, which I'm gonna have to explain. I'm gonna sit down while I do this. And its bug is, it doesn't remember the settings. So I've gotta press the gear icon in the upper right hand corner, and I gotta tell it how many rows and how many columns I wanna shoot. Now, to keep this uh, pano job simple, I'm gonna do seven rows, or sorry, seven photos per row, and I'm gonna do three rows total, and I'll do one uh, nader shot. So, I just set that. So then what I gotta do is uh, scroll to the bottom of the page here and hit save. So now, there's a big blue start button in the middle of the screen, and if I press that, the drone should start doing its shoot. Now keep in mind, it's gonna do its best to stay stable. These drones are not that stable. Even outdoors, you'll find it flutters around several meters up, down, left, right, front, back while you're shooting a panorama. And you can see it's moving around in the room here as well. When it's windier, it's harder for it to stay still. In a perfect world, the GPS would lock it rock solid but that just doesn't seem to happen. So what that means is shooting panos at higher altitudes is easier because your parallax is less of a problem. So let's hit start and it's gonna start doing it and it's gonna tilt the camera up. There it is. It's gonna take a shot and you can see in the upper left-hand corner there's a shot counter. So it's done one and it's gonna shoot the second one. Now I'll flip over to my other view here and I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna zoom in on the drone. So now it's rotating a little bit here as it's doing that. Now let's just take a look here. Okay, there we are in focus. Now you can clearly see that the drone is drifting with respect to the background in the room here. 
and it's really starting to drift. I might need to take control of this. So I think basically as the compass has done its um, job, when the drone starts to rotate, it's not all that great. But don't worry about that too much. We're just trying to show the technique here. And it likes to shoot these things in column order. Now I'm just going to move the drone away from me a little bit here. Get it back into the middle of the room. There's no way this panorama is going to stitch. But this is, doesn't change the technique. Let's get back here. You actually see the battery level in real time from the drone here too. Okay, now it's trying to do another column. I'll go forward a bit, get it back into the middle of the room. So needless to say, using a drone to shoot a panorama in a small room is not a substitute for using your real gear. You can shoot a handheld panorama more accurately than this. Now we're at image 15 of 22. What I find annoying about this program is that it shoots the panorama in row pri or sorry column priority. It's really drifting. And I also find this program is kind of slow. However, it is automated and it's free, so it's worth a shot. You can shoot these things by hand usually a lot more accurately and faster. So now it's at image 2021. 20, it's probably going to do the ground shot. Let me just flip over here, get you the live view. Now you're looking through the drone and it's doing the straight down shot. And it's trying to get it shot. I don't know if it's finished or not. Now it says it's completed the pano. Let's go back. So yeah, that's the screen, completed the pano, and we're good to go. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip back to the other application, which is the DJI one. You'll see that it needs to connect because it was disconnected. Now it's back and connected. So this is exactly the process you do when you're in the field. Now, what if we wanted to shoot a pano without the application? We're just gonna do it by hand. So I'll keep the uh, main camera here looking at it. So let's just flip back to our other view. There's a drone sitting in the air. So. I've got my um, gimbal, I'm going to pitch up the gimbal, so I can go up to a maximum of 30 degrees, and I've got grid markers on my screen, so let's go back here and get our live view. So here we are, I'm going to just hope the drone stays solid, and I'm just going to take pictures by hand. You can shoot pictures from the remote of the drone with a shutter button, which is in the back of the uh, remote, a uh, little silver button, I can show that to you later. Uh oh, okay, drone's moving around here. So let's take a shot. There we go. Let's rotate the drone. We just use the grids here to rotate enough. Take a shot. Rotate the drone a bit more. Take a shot. Rotate the drone. Take a shot. And it's drifting all over the place. Take a shot. You're going to find you shoot more shots doing it this way, but you can get it done pretty quick and you can shoot it in row priority. Okay, so there we are now. So now let's tilt the camera down to about level or a little bit below level. Shoot. Shoot. And you sort of look at your screen just to make sure you've got enough overlap between all your shots. We're getting awfully close to the camera here. I'm going to, I'll just flip over to the other view so you can see it. You can see how close we are to the camera here. I better fly away a little bit. Get it back to where it was. Anyway, keep shooting. Rotate a bit. Shoot. And rotate. And shoot. I'm getting some warnings from the drone as well. Here, let me zoom out a bit so you can see what we're doing here. It is moving around a lot. Focus on the drone. Keep shooting, rotate, rotate, and shoot. And like I said, there's no way these are going to stitch, but this is just showing you the procedure. 
Now we'd rotate, we'd, uh, oh sorry, I tilted down too far. Now we'd tilt down a little bit more and we'd do another column. I'm just doing it as fast as I can do it. Now, if you were outdoors in bright sunlight, this would work quite well because you'd be at high shutter speeds. And, all, and of course, the GPS would lock it into place and you'd be at a much higher altitude as well. So uh, it wouldn't really matter if it's moving around like this. I mean, it's you know moving around here, maybe what, a meter and a half, two meters max? If we were up 100 meters in the air, that wouldn't really matter. Now the other thing we could do is when we come down to do the bottom row, oh, go down a little bit more here. We don't need to shoot as many shots. We can just go shoot four. And then we'll flip the camera all the way down for, the, for a nadir shot. And that's a technique to shoot the panel by hand. Now let's go and uh, flip around here. Let's do a land. I'll zoom out here. We're still on the 5D's shot here. So now if we want to land the drone, we've got a couple of controls here. It's drifting around a bit. Let me just fly backwards a bit, get it into the center of the room. Now, if I want to land this by hand, here's how I do it. I just slowly bring down with my remote. You can almost see my remote here in my hand. So that's, that's my control for up and down. So I just slowly bring her down and she'll land and then I hold down and it'll stop. So that's how you land it by hand. Now let's just uh, take off by hand as well. So to take off by hand, let's see if I can focus here, you bring both the controls down like this. That powers up the propellers. Now you see they're spinning. And then you just lift up on your left stick and it will take off. There we go. One drone in the air. So that's how you manually take off. Now, let me show you a automatic landing. So we'll get back into the drone's eye view here. Let's go up a little bit, rotate it around so we can see me. Okay. We'll come forward a little bit. And on the screen, there is a landing. The same spot where you had takeoff is now landing. So I'm just going to press that button on the left hand side. And there we are. And uh, just ask me if I want to land. And it will land. Now, if you were outdoors and you had good solid GPS signal, you also have an option called return to home. So it's really critical when you're using the drone outdoors to make sure that it knows where home is. So I tend to always take off under software control, which is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to just press the software button and do a takeoff. And if I was outdoors, it would go and hover. And then it would usually bring up a message on screen that says the home point has been recorded. Really critical that you see that message because if you lose connection with your radio while you're flying, it'll attempt, assuming you've got it set that way, to return to home. Now let me just land it here. Just by hand. So if you've got the drone's preferences to do a um, return to home, let me just get back to our other camera here. And I'm going to go stand in front. Let's go give me a wide angle here. And I'll just come over here and get in the picture. So if you have good solid GPS signal and you are flying your drone outdoors and you take off and you log the home point and you've got the preferences set in the app to return to home if it loses signal. And of course, there's all sorts of weird obstacle avoidance and it can return to home on the same path it flew away from. So that's ideal because you want to get your drone back if something bad happens. And even though the range of these radios is very good, you could have some issue that causes a problem like, you know, you fly behind a tree or behind a building and it loses signal. And it'd be nice if it just returns to home versus just sitting there in the air until the battery dies and then it falls out of the air or lands someplace where you can't get to it. Because if it you lose signal and it lands somewhere, you just sort of know the general area where it was. You might have a hard time finding it. So here's the problem. 
if you're in a mad dash and you take off manually and you just go for a quick flight and you lose signal, the drone might attempt to return home, but it didn't log your home point. So it will return to the previously logged home point, which could be wherever you last flew it from and you'll lose your drone. And of course, that's how people lose your drones all the time. So it's kind of important to have a whole slew of sort of checklist items that you want to use when you're, uh, you go through when you're getting ready to launch the drone. You want to make sure that uh, camera's set up, make sure the propellers are in good shape, make sure the drone's got no damage, make sure the gimbal's working, make sure the SD card's formatted, make sure you've got all your settings for the drone, how you want it. And there's literally hundreds of settings. So you get familiar with all these settings. And then of course, take off under software control and make sure you see the status panel that the home point has been registered. I don't know exactly what the, whether it says. It's obvious when you see it. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to take all this uh, broadcasting stuff that we're doing here outdoors and do a real drone pano shoot. But for the sake of uh, today's little test, it was kind of fun to do it inside. I know that you know these panoramas aren't gonna stitch. Uh, I'm not even gonna bother trying it, but that's the sort of idea. Now let me pop over behind the camera here, or sorry, over to the desk, and uh, let's get um, our last little bit finished up here. Um, I'm gonna just flip over to the drone's eye view here. So there's the drone, it's still flying. And uh, what I might do is just quickly take off. We still got 47% power. I can take off from over there. So let me just take off. Okay. Here we go. We'll go up a little higher. And we'll fly over to me. There you go. Okay. Well, it was great to uh, do a little live broadcast on Facebook. Um, and uh, everything worked. You can see my desk. Here's all the stuff that we're using. We've got all the Black Magic devices here. So we've got the Black Magic Atom, which is the eight camera switcher. We've got the Hyper Deck, which is recording this in full HD so that we can put it on Facebook. We've got the Black Magic Web Presenter, which is uh, taking the complete feed and making it into a webcam. That's then running into the MacBook Pro, which is over here. I can show you the MacBook Pro if I fly a little closer. Uh, I don't know if I can fly closer to myself here or not. There you go, there's the MacBook Pro. Uh, we're using some Ethernet in the system as well to control some of the Blackmagic devices and of course to get online. Uh, over here in the front there's an Apple TV, which of course is how we're streaming. And um, yeah, that's how it all works. Um, very exciting. Now, if you're interested in all this broadcasting stuff, I'm gonna talk a bit more in depth about it in a live broadcast at 1 p.m. Uh, on Thursday, so I'll put some notices about that. Let's get this drone out of the way here. Might have to land it. <laughs> it's starting to drift a bit. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm going to do a broadcast on Thursday from the media school here, the lecture uh, theater at Michael's Camera, all about streaming on Facebook using all these tools. So that's kind of why I wanted to do this test case just to show you how it all works. And I thought I'd use it, you know, talk about drones. So uh, I'm gonna uh, sign off now, try to get this drone landed. So let me see if I can fly over here. The obstacle avoidance is doing all sorts of stuff here because it doesn't want to run into things. So let's see if we can back up a bit. There we go. We can, uh, maybe we'll fly down the room a little bit here for you. And maybe we'll fly back. And let's go and land. Okay. So we'll sign off and I'll land. Hope you enjoyed my broadcast. Uh, hopefully the audio was okay. That drone is noisy in here. And uh, let's uh, just, uh, we'll sign off with a little bit of an aerial panoramic view of Port Melbourne here. And let's just get channel three ready to roll here. Let's make that full screen. And let's go and uh, find a panorama here. 
So there we go. That, I oh, better turn it on. There's a panorama shot with this exact drone over Port Melbourne. So this is kind of what your end result is going to look like when you put it all together. Um, I am flying over top of a park here. So in the center of the panorama, you see there's a parkland. I think I'm down in the bottom corner here. And um, this is where I live. Uh, the city of Melbourne, where the store is located, is through here. You can't see the building, but the store would be over here somewhere, if you can see my mouse. And, of course, this is Port Phillip Bay and the beach, and I live in Port Melbourne. And this was one of my clients, Port Melbourne Cycles, and we did the panoramic tour for them because they're selling their business. And so they wanted to have uh, some aerial views in that panoramic tour. And here's another view of the same location for Port Melbourne Cycles. They're in the little building right here on Bay Street in Port Melbourne. And this, of course, is taken from the beach. So I'm flying down here in the scrub grass at the uh, base of the beach. And again, this is where the docks are for the ferry down to the Spirit of, Ta for the Spirit of Tasmania to take you to Tasmania. And for what it's worth, I actually live somewhere around over here beyond this lighthouse, probably about over there. Anyway, let's uh, sign off now and I'll put my watermark back on the screen here. And let's see if that can work here. Drone panels preview. There we go, intro to drones. So I've got all that working. So it was, um, hopefully that was a um, interesting broadcast and the technology worked. I know the drone wasn't that stable, but um, I think I, you've got the idea of how we shoot panels with drones. We can use an app or we can shoot them by hand. Um, and uh, you just basically got to make sure you got enough overlap. And uh, when you're at a nice high altitude, all that drifting around doesn't really destroy it too much. Shoot at low altitude, it's a little bit harder. So that's uh, Intro to Drones for Panos. I hope you enjoyed everything, and uh, we'll see you on our next broadcast. And like I say, hopefully we'll be able to take this whole thing outdoors and uh, do a real shoot with some extra cameramen and you know really wrap it up nice and then do a post-production day where we uh, go through all the procedures necessary to stitch the panoramas. But that's uh, John Workington from Pano Boot Camp or Michael's Camera, depending on which hat I'm wearing at the time, signing off and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care and it's time for a little fade to black.